Today's morning devotional. Our vital force. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. Genesis chapter 5 verse 5. The book of Genesis gives quite a definite account of social and individual life, and yet we have no record of an infant's being born blind, deaf, crippled, deformed, or imbecile. There is not an instance upon record of a natural death in infancy, childhood, or early manhood. There is no account of men and women dying of disease. Obituary notices in the book of Genesis run thus, and all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. And all the days of Seth were 912 years, and he died. Concerning others, the record states, he lived to a good old age, and he died. It was so rare for a son to die before the father that such an occurrence was considered worthy of record, and Haran died before his father Terah. Haran was a father of children before his death. God endowed man with so great vital force that he has withstood the accumulation of disease brought upon the race in consequence of perverted habits, and has continued for 6,000 years. This fact of itself is enough to evidence to us the strength and electrical energy that God gave to man at his creation. It took more than 2,000 years of crime and indulgence of base passions to bring bodily disease upon the race to any great extent. If Adam, at his creation, had not been endowed with 20 times as much vital force as men now have, the race, with their present habits of living in violation of natural law, would have become extinct. At the time of Christ's first advent the race had degenerated so rapidly that an accumulation of disease pressed upon that generation, bringing in a tide of woe and a weight of misery inexpressible. God did not create the race in its present feeble condition. This state of things is not the work of providence, but the work of man, it has been brought about by wrong habits and abuses, by violating the laws that God had made to govern man's existence. Through the temptation to indulge appetite, Adam and Eve first fell from their high, holy, and happy estate. And it is through the same temptation that the race have become enfeebled. They have permitted appetite and passion to take the throne, and to bring into subjection reason and intellect. The strange absence of principle which characterizes this generation, and which is shown in their disregard of the laws of life and health, is astonishing. Ignorance prevails upon this subject, while light is shining all around them. With the majority, their principal anxiety is, what shall I eat? What shall I drink? And wherewithal shall I be clothed? How great is the contrast between this generation and those who lived during the first 2000 years.